The one-year anniversary of Occupy Wall Street is coming up soon, on Monday, September 17th, and organizers are preparing to celebrate. Anniversary events will be held through the preceding weekend, with festivities including various pop-up occupations, a concert, and direct action in the financial districts. Added details like the call to action and schedule are available at s17nyc.org. We spoke with several organizers about what's being planned. S17 is sort of our, the way we describe September 17th. A lot of people are saying it's September 17th, it's the one year anniversary of Occupy Wall Street. It is the one day we can be most certain people will be interested in listening again. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that people are curious by reminding them we've never left, we've been here all along. You might not necessarily have had an easy time hearing about us because we haven't been in the same park we've used to be in all the time. The first day on Saturday uh, and the second day on Sunday are devoted to educational events to teach each other about what the struggles are and what's going on. Um, one of those days will be devoted to training, including nonviolent direct action training so that we, we all know sort of how to play our roles in what's going to happen on Monday, September 17th. So the morning is going to start with a bold strike at the heart of the problem which is the stock exchange. Groups of 30 to 50 people going from intersection to intersection, potentially causing distractions or even occasionally traffic backups by crossing at inopportune moments and preventing traffic from going by. On S17, we have slightly different actions than the official uh, Occupy Wall Street. Our actions basically deal with connecting again with the 99%. The people who are there, right there, get to decide from moment to moment what their level of involvement is, what level of risk they're willing to take on, and whether they're going to leave police presence or seek confrontation with police. So if you were there, you wanted to cause a lot of trouble and you were okay with possibly ending up in jail, you'd behave one way. If you were there and you didn't want to get in trouble because you couldn't take an arrest or you weren't a citizen and you might get deported, whatever, uh, you behaved entirely differently. There's a separate action that's been called 99 Pickets, it's been called the People's Wall. So the basic idea by, about this plan is it will be a sit-down civil disobedience in front of the stock exchange. Yes, we will be at the financial district at S17, but we will be doing a teach-in uh, at 9 o'clock uh, on how to move your money. Uh, just as effective as a, as a blockade and shutdown of Wall Street, it's just as effective for us to get our money out of these corporate banks. And it's time for the government to let these banks fail, you know, and uh, start really prosecuting people that have wrecked this uh, economy and wrecked this system. And what they're acting as is like, like leeches, parasites on the rest of us, on the rest of the country. Instead of having capitalists invest their money to create things, uh, factories and jobs, they're using their financial power to extract a kind of a rent, to find out that point where we have to use their services and then take a greater percentage of the money for their own pockets. This is creating an unsustainable economy, both for, for us as individuals, for our country, and for the world. And they leave us with no choice. We have to shut that down before it's too late. And then, at the end of the action, we're going to turn our backs on Wall Street and seek our own solution. So whatever that means to you, bring your conversation to the park. At that point, at around noon, we're going to be done with civil disobedience for the day. We're going to be done with direct action. We're going to sit down and have some serious conversations with whoever wants to sit and talk with us. We happily invite you to come. Occupy the Subway is simply us going onto a subway and doing mic checks. And then, you know, a lot of times it's us telling personal stories. Us telling, uh, you know, how we may have lost our homes or how we may have been uh, evicted. You know, we go in there, we mic check, we talk to people, we pass out flyers, we truly engage people. And when we start talking about the issues, people unite with us and they definitely uh, support what we're doing. I've been on about four or five different Occupy the Subways uh, actions uh, for all of our major events and each time we've gotten standing ovations from the people and people have always taken flyers and tried to give us donations and, you know, it's just very, very important. It's us being directly there with working people, with students, with the masses of people. It's not only, you know, effective tool, but it's also very fun because it helps us reconnect, you know, with the 99%. And it kind of lets us know that we aren't in this by ourselves and that we aren't so crazy, that other people are going through it as well. 
And we hope that, they, that the press will mention the issues that we're fighting about, that we're, we're, we're basically trying to defend the rights of people who are the 99%, who may have lost their jobs, they're living without health insurance, their kids go to crappy schools, they're, they're fighting for a way to live in this crazy world. Um, but we also hope that they take note that we did, we did put a stop to business as usual, at least for a little bit. If we can stop Wall Street for one day, for one hour, for one minute, well, that'll be a start, and we can continue from there. We don't know quite what the size and scope of it is going to be. It can scale as large as, say, we get 2,000 people. Then this thing they've called the People's Picket can completely surround Wall Street, not just the stock exchange, and move as a roving picket, challenging people as they go to work and saying, we are offering you this opportunity to repent for your sins. And then if they don't take it, well, after they've gone to work, we sit down, surround the stock exchange, and call for a citizen's arrest of all the bankers. If we get a smaller number than that, it might not have to be a picket surrounding Wall Street. It might just be a smaller, more localized action like was done on November 17th, where the seven intersections surrounding the stock exchange were occupied in a distributed fashion, and there was a sit-down civil disobedience that clogged up the area for hours. We are having a coordinating meeting. We know the deadline. We have to know what the size and scope of the action is. On Wednesday, September 12th at Liberty Plaza at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a final training and planning meeting to figure out the final details of coordination. We're hoping to know the exact size and scope of everything at that point in time to plan for Monday the 17th. Really, when we want to talk about what it means to productively invest capital and resources to make the economy a better place, we're really talking about the job creators. And if there's one thing we can say about Wall Street, they're job destroyers, not job creators. Surrounding the stock exchange and saying, we remember what you did. We remember the center of the problem. We're calling you out. We're going to bring you to justice one way or the other whether it's the government taking intervention or us acting ourselves, we are going to make sure that the system that they have propagated is tumbled down. But that one day, 13, even 14 hours, as I was told, uh, is not going to create the revolution or the change that we think that it's going to do. Um, we saw what happened with May Day. Uh, we saw what happened with N17. Those were great days. We got thousands of people out. But the reason we got thousands of people out because we were actually reaching out to the 99%. It wasn't just unions. There was also other groups and all the GAs that had come together, you know, for those days of actions. And uh, I think one of the errors that we, we keep making, and I hope I'm not repeating myself, but, you know, these one-day actions aren't going to make the change that we think that they are. So it's a continuing in a struggle, and you know, hopefully S17 will lead to more deeper sort of actions. I think at the end of the day, what we're going to need to do is not only be in every community, but 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 be providing some sort of service, some sort of program, uh, some sort of community, or being a part of some sort of community where the people can see and latch on to and say, yeah, this is the type of world that we want. We want the people in control, not the corporations. Well, it certainly looks like a lot of people are expecting this to be the big resurgent of Occupy's visibility, the thing that will uh, put an end to the rumors of our, of our death, the premature uh, rumors of our death. But uh, I don't know. How many, I have no idea if this is going to be big or a fizzler. What do you think? Well, I've heard some pretty incredible rumors myself, actually. Uh, the other day I heard that something is expected like 30,000 people by bus alone from all over the country are supposed to be coming into NYC. So that's pretty exciting. And that's just bus alone. And I mean, uh, there's also obviously the, the organizing efforts from websites like s17nyc.org. And, uh, you know, they, they have some pretty awesome resources on there for ride shares. And there's also an Amtrak discount if you put in and plug in the discount code. So they're really trying to pull out the, all the stops to make sure people have ways to get out here. Well, that's a nice crowd estimate. And uh, nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd. So maybe people here, when they hear about all these people from out of town in the streets, will come out in mass as well. Hopefully. I'm looking forward to it.